When we think about terrifying prehistoric animals, usually the T-Rex springs to mind. No doubt about it, the T-Rex was a dangerous and formidable predator, but there were many larger, much faster and more deadly animals than the king of the tyrant lizards. There are a lot of top 10 videos on this topic, so we decided to know what artificial intelligence thinks about it. Here are top 10 most terrifying prehistoric animals according to ChatGPT. So the first choice of ChatGPT is the Tyrannosaurus rex, which was a giant carnivorous dinosaur with sharp teeth and powerful jaws. These dinosaurs' muscular body stretched as long as 40 feet, about the size of a school bus, from its snout to the tip of its powerful tail. Weaning up to 8 tons, T-Rex stomped headfirst across its territory on two strong legs. These dinosaurs likely preyed on living animals and scavenged carcasses and sometimes they even ate one another. The head of a T-Rex was the real stuff of nightmares. This fierce carnivore was optimally built for crunching through its meal with a stiff skull that allowed it to channel all the forces of its muscles into one bite, delivering up to 6 tons of pressure. In spite of all its advantages, T-Rex was no match for the mass extinction event that claimed three quarters of life on Earth 66 million years ago. This cataclysm occurred when an asteroid or comet the size of a mountain slammed into Earth, whipping out Tyrannosaurus rex along with the rest of the non-avian dinosaurs and bringing a sudden end to the Cretaceous period. The second most terrifying prehistoric monster according to ChatGPT is Spinosaurus, which was a massive semi-aquatic dinosaur with a sail-like structure on its back. Spinosaurus is a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 112 to 93.5 million years ago. It was first discovered in Egypt in 1912 by the German paleontologist Ernest Stromer. Spinosaurus is known for its distinctive sail-like structure on its back, made up of elongated spines that were likely covered in skin. It had a long, narrow snout and powerful jaws filled with sharp teeth, indicating that it was a carnivorous predator. Its size has been estimated to be up to 18 meters 59 feet in length and 7 to 20 tons in weight, making it one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs known to have existed. Spinosaurus is also notable for its aquatic adaptations. Fossil evidence suggests it spent a significant amount of time in water, with adaptations such as dense bones for buoyancy and paddle-like feet for swimming. It likely fed on fish and other aquatic prey in addition to land animals. Despite its massive size and unique adaptations, much of Spinosaurus biology and behavior remains a mystery due to the incomplete nature of the fossils that have been found. Smilodon is one of the best-known saber-toothed predators and most famous prehistoric mammals. Although commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, it was not closely related to the tiger or other modern cats. Smilodon lived in the Americas during the Pleistocene epoch 2.5 million years ago up to 10,000 years ago. Smilodon was more robustly built than any extant cat with particularly well-developed forelimbs and exceptionally long upper canine teeth. Its jaw had a bigger grip than that of modern cats and its upper canines were slender and fragile, being adapted for precision killing. Smilodon fatalis had a weight of 160 to 280 kilograms, 350 to 620 pounds, and height of 1 meter 39 inches. The anatomy of the saber-toothed cat suggests it was an ambush predator and had a relatively good jumping ability. The hyoid bones in the throat of the saber-toothed cat suggest it could communicate by roaring like modern big cats. There are also several Smilodon fossils that exhibit healed injuries, which have led some paleontologists to suggest that they had some form of social structure that shared resources. These social groups could have been similar to African lion prides or perhaps monogamous pairs with offspring. The earliest megalodon or Autodus megalodon fossils date to 20 million years ago. For the next 13 million years, the enormous shark dominated the oceans until becoming extinct just 3.6 million years ago. Estimates suggest megalodon actually grew to between 15 and 18 meters in length, three times longer than the largest recorded great white shark. It may have been comparable in length to today's biggest whale sharks, the largest of which has measured in at 18.8 meters. In order to tackle prey as large as whales, Megalodon had to be able to open its mouth wide. 
It is estimated that its jaw would span 2.7 by 3.4 meters wide, easily big enough to swallow two adult people side by side. These jaws were lined with 276 teeth, and studies reconstructing the shark's bite force suggest it may have been one of the most powerful predators ever to have existed. Humans have been measured with a bite force of around 1,370 newtons, while great white sharks have been predicted to be able to bite down with a force of 18,216 newtons. Researchers have estimated that Megalodon had a bite of between 108,514 and 182,201 newtons. We know that Megalodon had become extinct by the end of the Pliocene, 2.6 million years ago, when the planet entered a phase of global cooling. Precisely when the last Megalodon died is not known, but new evidence suggests that it was at least 3.6 million years ago. Scientists think that up to a third of all large marine animals, including 43% of turtles and 35% of seabirds, became extinct as temperatures cooled and the number of organisms at the base of the food chain plummeted, resulting in a knock-on effect to the predators at the top. Among the ancient beasts that ruled the oceans of the world millions of years ago were the Mosasaurus. It's a genus of massive aquatic carnivorous lizards that lived during the late Cretaceous era from about 70 to 66 million years ago. Mosasaurus hoffmanni is the biggest mosasaur fossil ever found. Scientists estimate that it was about 46 to 56 feet long. Its size is comparable to that of the Megalodon, a well-known giant prehistoric shark believed to have lived around the same time. Although Mosasaurus were reptiles, they were similar in appearance to modern-day whales. They had a two-lobed tail made of soft tissue. The Mosasaurus tail bent slightly downwards towards the end. They also had a pair of forelimbs and a hind limbs. They used these paddle-like limbs for fast swimming. The Mosasaurus became extinct about 65 million years ago, along with the non-avian dinosaurs. Scientists have linked their disappearance to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction caused by a giant asteroid that crashed into the Earth. Titanoboa, the enormous serpent of legend, thrived in the tropical jungles of South America some 5 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. The death of the giant reptiles left a vacuum at the top of the food chain, and Titanoboa gladly stepped up. These prehistoric species grew up to 50 feet in length and weighed as much as 2,500 pounds. That's as long as a semi-trailer you see on highways and about twice as heavy as a polar bear. You would think that a snake the size of Titanoboa could eat anything it fancied, but scientists believe that the snake ate mostly fish, but sometimes they could gulp down crocodilians or giant turtles. They came to this conclusion because of the snake's palate and the number and anatomy of its teeth. Titanoboa lived in the hot tropical rainforest that flourished between 58 and 60 million years ago, well after all the carnivorous predatory dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex were safely dead. Because it was so large and heavy, the snake probably spent most of its life in the many rivers of its habitat. Titanoboa died out around 58 to 60 million years ago, so its dominance was fairly brief in geological terms. Scientists aren't quite sure, but they believe that climate change had something to do with it. The climate started to cool, and the enormous snake and other large reptiles couldn't maintain their metabolism. Also, the rainforest where Titanoboa reigned gave way to grasslands over time. All of these paved the way for the emergence and eventual dominance of smaller reptiles. Pterodostra is an extinct genus of pterosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous period, around 120 million years ago. It was a type of pterosaur known as a flamingo pterosaur due to its long, slender beak that was specialized for filter feeding, much like the modern flamingo. Like many known pterosaur species, the 8-foot wingspan pterodostra lived and hunted near water, in this case near lakes in what is today central Argentina. While some pterosaurs had a small number of big, sharp teeth for stabbing prey, Pterodostro had about 1,000 teeth in its bill. Paleontologists infer that these species' lower teeth may have allowed it to filter feed by scooping up water and straining it for tiny aquatic animals, much like flamingos do today. Its fossils provide important insights into the diversity of pterosaurs during the early Cretaceous period and their adaptations to various ecological niches. 
Quetzalcoatlus, a pterosaur as large as a giraffe, lived 71 million years ago. Its wingspan was 10 to 12 meters, 33 to 40 feet, and its beak length was about 2.5 meters, 8.2 feet. Paleontologists estimate that Quetzalcoatlus could have flown at speeds up to 128 km per hour, 80 miles an hour, and could have traveled 643 km, 400 miles a day. Its powerful muscles may have allowed it to launch itself into the air quickly. The first Quetzalcoatlus fossils were discovered in Texas from the Maastricht and Javelina Formation at Big Bend National Park in 1971 by geology graduate student Douglas Lawson. A more recent theory suggests that this reptilian might have been an active predator that hunts its prey by stalking and attacking them. Like modern stalks, Quetzalcoatlus northropi probably preyed on small vertebrates. Some scientists believe that the Quetzalcoatlus northropi survived the main extinction event because it could fly. However, it still did not survive for too long after this due to a lack of food. Dunkelosteus is a genus of large armored fish that lived during the Devonian period. It's one of the earliest jawed fish to have ever lived. The fish is known for its enormous bite force and could close its mouth rapidly like modern suction feeding fish. Dunkelosteus lived in North America, Morocco, Belgium, and Poland about 382 to 358 million years ago. Some conservative estimates place the Dunkelosteus length at about 15 feet while more generous one claim it could have been as long as 19.6 feet. However, the most recent attempt to reconstruct this animal by comparing it with modern pelagic sharks in similar ecological niches turned up a massive estimate of 28.8 feet and a weight of about 4.4 tons 8, pounds for the largest species. A series of mass extinction events at the end of the Devonian period wiped out most of the animals existing at the time, including the Dunkelosteus and other placoderms. Although they quickly diversified into several species after first appearing in the Devonian period, their existence lasted only a short time. Although it looks superficially like a dinosaur, Dimetrodon was actually a type of prehistoric reptile known as a pelicosaur, and it lived during the Permian period 50 million years or so before the first dinosaurs had even evolved. The most distinctive feature of Dimetrodon was this pelicosaur's giant seal. Since this slow-moving reptile almost certainly possessed a cold-blooded metabolism, it probably evolved its seal as a temperature regulation device, using it to soak up valuable sunlight during the daytime and dissipate excess heat at night. Secondarily to it, this seal may have been a sexually selected characteristic. Because they lived so long ago, even researchers are having a hard time determining their diet. They were almost sure that this prehistoric predator was a carnivore because of the appearance of its teeth. The Dimetrodon went extinct by the end of the Permian period because of a phenomenon called the Great Dying. This event was triggered by catastrophic volcanic eruptions that wiped out over 90% of all species and 97% of all life on Earth, including land and ocean species.